Hello, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. I'm here to talk to you about Celestron's Power Seeker EQ 127 Reflector Telescope. This is the first telescope I bought, and I'll just go ahead right away up front and admit, when I bought this telescope, I didn't do enough research. I did look at some reviews online and read some of those, and also read the marketing and specification the details about the telescope but I was new to the hobby I didn't really have that much background knowledge and I should have got better educated so after owning the telescope there are a number of things I learned that caused me to come to the conclusion I made a mistake I shouldn't have bought this telescope I should have done more research I'm going to share 10 of those reasons with you and I created a series of brief videos sharing each of those reasons if you enjoy this video, you might want to look at some of the other reasons that I share about why you should reconsider purchasing this telescope. So let's get started. This is the finder scope, and what I found is it's it's not really ergonomic is one issue. So the due to the position of the telescope, it's usually in a, in a spot where it's, it's very difficult to look through the finder scope. And so the idea is with the finder scope is you're trying to initially, if you're looking for, let's say, Saturn or you know, one of the other planets, Jupiter, you're trying to locate that in the finder scope because it's, it's not as focused of a view as the telescope itself. And this needs to be aligned with your telescope. Well, there's a procedure for doing that. But what I found is it's got these two little screws that um, tilt the finder scope. And that's how you align this with the, the primary teles you know, the telescope itself. So that if you find something centered in the finder scope, then when you look through um, the, the uh, eyepiece, you're going to see that object. Or it's going to be fairly close into your field of view. However, I found that these adjusters and this finder scope were pretty limited. Again, it's not very ergonomic. I had a lot of time, a hard time, many times getting this aligned, and then it would also lose its alignment. So I guess maybe there's a slight bump, and this is not very sturdy, it's not very stable the way these set screws go down. And you would find yourself, you know, wanting to relocate another target, and now all of a sudden the finder scope is not, not aligned with the telescope itself again, and you have to do that realignment again that alignment is actually easier in the daytime with a terrestrial target like looking down the street or looking across your property at some object that's easy to you know locate during the day and then you do the alignment with the main telescope but at night it's much harder to do that to get it realigned well i hope you found hearing my experience with this telescope helpful and as i mentioned in the beginning i created a series of these videos just to keep them brief, you could look at the ones that you're interested in where I talk about the different reasons that I really wouldn't recommend this telescope. You might want to check out some of the others and they're in the description of this video. If you enjoy videos of this type dealing with astronomy and astrophotography, I also encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Leave any comments you have after you watch the video. I always enjoy hearing the viewers' feedback and I'm wishing you clear skies.